During the First World War, Germany needed to find a way to break the British Empire. Fortunately for them, the British had enemies around the world, so they looked to form alliances with them and break apart the Empire. Central to these plans was Franz von Papen, who you may well have heard of. He would later become Chancellor of Germany, and he was the man who persuaded Hindenburg to bring Hitler into the government and then serve as the Nazi ambassador to Austria and Turkey. But during the First World War, his life I believe was far more interesting. He had connections with people across the world, like the Irish Republicans, plus he organised raids from his base in America into Canada while trying to overthrow the government of Mexico. Yet it was his connections with Indian nationalists that really worried the British. This was what they called the Hindu-German conspiracy, and they were part of larger plans, which may have allied the Germans with the Afghans, Persians and the likes. But first, the Germanic barbarians and their Swabian knot, the Chinese Q-cut, the dreadlocks of the Rastafarians, the top knot of the samurai, the dyed hair of the vikings, the Amasunzu of Rwanda, the locks of Alexander the Great, the power of Samson, and the sign of glory among the Dothraki. All men take pride in their hair, and it has shown to the world who they are, and now, thankfully, we can make sure that we keep it thanks to Keeps. Keeps is a subscription service that focuses on making it easier and more affordable for men to treat their male pattern baldness. Now I'm going to hazard a guess that most of you watching this will be in your 20s or early 30s, and this is the best time to act, as two out of three of you will experience some form of male pattern baldness before you're 35. And the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. Keeps will send you the treatment to your door, so you can do all of this in the comfort of your own home, but treatments typically take between four to six months to start seeing results, so it's important to act fast. So the sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you can save. Plus, throughout it all, you will have constant access to a doctor online to answer any questions or concerns that you might have and to monitor the process. So, although you can do the treatment at home, don't assume you'll be alone throughout it all, as you'll have licensed doctors right alongside you. So, if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go on to keeps.com slash jabsy or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. Then you can find out why Keeps has more 5 star reviews than any of its competitors and why hundreds of thousands of men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention. So go to keeps.com slash jabsy if you want to prevent hair loss today. So to begin with, war between Britain and Germany was far from inevitable. The British after all feared Russian expansion into Asia and nearly fought the French numerous times in their colonies. There were actually a couple attempts to bring the two countries into an alliance in the 19th century and early 20th century. Joseph Chamberlain, the Secretary of Colonies, was particularly keen, and once said in a speech, a new triple alliance between the Teutonic race and the two transatlantic branches of the Anglo-Saxon race, which would become a potent influence on the future of the world. But the Germans under von Bülow were suspicious if Britain could uphold their end of the alliance, as their ruling party could always change. But you may recognise the name Chamberlain in British politics, and yes, Joseph Chamberlain is the father of Neville Chamberlain, the Prime Minister whose most famous action was his policy of appeasement before World War II. Yet there was another Chamberlain, Austin, the elder brother of Neville and son of Joseph. During the interwar years as Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs, he helped break up the French alliances with Poland and Czechoslovakia because he was happy to revise Germany's eastern borders. Plus, he was also a keen admirer of Mussolini, so the Chamberlain family seemed to have a history of backing the future enemies of Britain. Anyway, Chamberlain's plan failed, and Germany and Britain obviously went to war. So, back to von Papen. He was sent to Mexico before the war and witnessed their revolution. In fact, he even organised Europeans into a military force to fight on the sides of General Huerta, and that was during his first year as a diplomat. So, you can see he was keen to forge connections and the likes. He continued selling weapons to Huerta from his new base in Washington DC, but Huerta was eventually toppled, however, Mexico was still a possible ally. German attempts to bring Mexico into their sphere of influence predate the war though, as German ships had been bringing weapons into the country to aid Huerta in spite of American attempts at an arms embargo. Tensions rose quite a bit after the Americans occupied Veracruz in order to stop these shipments, resulting in the Iparinga incident of April 1914. This obviously worsened US-Mexican relations, and they continue to get worse, 
as Pancho Villa launched raids into American territory during the border wars. Plus, Mexico City was home to two German saboteurs, Kurt Janka and Lothar Vistka, who orchestrated attacks on American soil. The Black Tom explosion in New Jersey was described as the worst act of terrorism in American history, and destroyed millions of dollars of munitions and killed a few people. This was carried out during the First World War, but before the Americans entered it. And then, in 1917, they targeted a shipyard in San Francisco. Plus, alongside von Papen, there was Franz von Rintelen, who, posing as a businessman, tried to buy up American munitions to destroy them and create a shortage. He also met with Huerta and tried to push him into joining the war on Germany's side. So, there was ongoing border confrontations, new governments and the likes. And then, the Germans sent the Zimmermann telegram to the Mexicans, agreeing to aid them in reconquering some American states. But the new president of Mexico, Carranza, was aware that very few German supplies could get beyond the British blockades. So, the offer was refused, and the telegram was made public. Meanwhile, von Papen also tried to stir up trouble on America's northern borders. In New York, he, Zimmermann, and German spies began to look at blowing up Canadian railway lines, especially after Japan's entry into the war, as they believed that the Japanese would send troops that way. So, they put together a team to blow up a series of bridges and lines, hoping to target troop trains, but when it came time to move north, only three people turned up, and the plan was cancelled. Nevertheless, one German named Werner Horn was unaware of the plans being cancelled and set off to blow things up himself. In February 1915, his bomb went off in the Vanceboro International Bridge, but it did very little damage. Yet, Canada was still a potential target for an invasion, as von Papen hoped to unite German Americans, Irish Americans, and the large Indian population into an anti-British force. This had been done way back in the 1860s and 1870s, as Irish Fanians launched raids into British Canada from the United States. So, this is not a completely unbelievable plan. And now, there was a large number of Indian nationalists in North America, who were already looking to stir up a little bit of trouble. As for the Irish, Republican leaders like John Devoy met with German ambassadors to the United States, while Roger Casement went to Germany and created a remarkably small Irish brigade out of prisoners of war to fight against the British. However, they had little success in getting the Germans to agree to send an expeditionary force to Ireland in support of a rebellion. But von Papen was constantly in communication with them and helped to negotiate a shipment of weapons. These weapons were sent on the Oud from Germany, but the British were able to stop the ship before it arrived in Ireland in 1916. But the far grander plan was focused on India and the Indian immigrants who formed the Ghadar movement. They were largely Punjabi, and besides those in North America, they also developed branches of sorts across the world among Indian immigrants. So, like in Malaysia and Singapore, which had large Indian populations, but also the Philippines, Mexico, South Africa, and China, among others. And, as you would expect, their main goal was acquiring weapons to launch a rebellion in India. So, similar to Sun Yat-sen in the Kuomintang before the Chinese Revolution, or the number of Irish Republicans in America funding rebellions in Ireland. Now, tensions were already running high between this community and the Canadian authorities before the war, because of their racial immigration policies. The Indians had already directly challenged these laws by sailing the Komagata Maru to Canada, but they were denied entry, and when they returned to India, some of the passengers were killed by the authorities. So, when the war broke out, the Hindu-German conspiracy began. This involved actors working around the world, buying weapons and trying to stoke up a rebellion. For instance, the Indians tried to purchase weapons from the Chinese a couple of times, but Sun Yat-sen was suspicious of a German alliance, so refused. But the most international of these plans was probably the Annie Larson affair. This involved all sorts of groups, as von Papen purchased $200,000 worth of weapons from various agents, Irish Americans helped ship them, and they used the Mexican Civil War as a front. The goal was to bring the weapons to the thousands of Indian nationalists who had returned to India in preparation, and there they would oust the British. From the United States, the weapons would be transported to Mexico, put on another ship, go to the Dutch East Indies, Burma, and then eventually India. But although the first ship, the Annie Larson, arrived off the coast of Mexico, the ship that was supposed to take the weapons across the Pacific didn't turn up. The Annie Larson then returned to the United States, where it was taken by customs agents. However, over in Asia, the Nationalist was still anticipating the shipment. All the while, they had been storing up whatever weapons they could, and gathering up funds through robberies. Then, in February 1915, soldiers in Singapore mutinied. 
but without a larger, more coordinated effort, this was doomed to fail. And one reason there weren't more mutinies is because of the British intelligence agencies, who were receiving information from Indians and Irish on both sides of the Pacific. But, weirdly, one of the best British agents was Emmanuel Victor Vosca, a Czech man. So, the Czechs and the British were spying on the Indians, Irish and Germans. This was a very international affair. So, Germans, Indians and Irish working across Asia and North America were being infiltrated by Czechs. Plus, Vosca also did a great deal of work in preventing the Germans from aiding Huerta in Mexico. But this wasn't the Germans' only attempt to get into India, as, although the Gadar movement was coming from the east, there was the Berlin Committee, who tried to infiltrate the subcontinent from the west. This group of Indian nationalists, obviously based in Berlin, had members inside Syria, Egypt and Baghdad, and they hoped to infiltrate the Indian forces fighting for the British. Then they would begin to assassinate British officers and force the British out of Asia. In fact, one of the causes for the British campaign in Mesopotamia was to demonstrate the British strength in the region, as if they had been absent from the Middle East and Asia, there was a strong likelihood that India and the likes would have fallen. The Berlin Committee did manage to blow up an officer's mess, and working inside the Ottoman Empire, they began to recruit prisoners of war to form an Indian Volunteer Legion. Some Indian nationalists like Ambra Prasad even brought troops through Persia, and harassed the British in Central Asia and Western India. This played into a much larger plan of the Germans. The Niedermeyer Hentig expedition was sent to Afghanistan via the Ottoman Empire and Persia, and there, they hoped to encourage the Emir of Afghanistan to break free from British fear of influence and invade India. For their part, the Indian nationalists formed a provincial government inside Kabul under the leadership of Raja Mahendra Patrap, but the Emir remained neutral, and this sort of highlights one of the major issues of the Hindu-German conspiracy. Obviously, you can see that most of the ideas were poorly planned, but, more than that, within the nationalist movements, there were huge disagreements. The Gadarite movement was a largely Hindu and Sikh affair, while just like with the Irish Republicans, many feared that they would just be swapping British control for German control. On the other hand, the Indian nationalists working inside the Ottoman Empire and Persia were almost pan-Islamic. There was actually a larger Islamic fight against the Russians and British in particular. Although the British had largely aided the Ottomans against the Russians in previous decades, now they were on opposite sides, and the Germans had been investing heavily in their empire. This alliance, along with the Berlin-Baghdad Railroad, sort of thrust Germany into the Middle East. While the Ottomans funded Turkic rebels in Russian Central Asia, they clashed in Persia and even called for a jihad. So had these Indian nationalists been successful, with the aid of the Ottomans and potentially even the Afghans, maybe the British Raj could have been placed under an Islamic government. But these are just some of the strange German alliances around the world, from Mexico to the Irish to the Indians. Now, this brings me to my question today. Do you know any other stranger alliances that were formed either during World War II or the First World War? Leave them in the comments below.